Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're getting after it again. Trying to really make some good progress on this thing. It's like another day in paradise, but that is not the case. It crazy rain this morning. So you notice the BN Sports hat. In that rain this morning, my hat blew off and blew into a gutter and got soaked. So, gotta protect my bald head. This is what I got. Just finally getting out of here this afternoon. Uh, you can see it's like pretty dry. Got a couple hours here. I'm just gonna try and chip away and do what I can. Let's do some DC2 stuff. Where we left off in the engine bay, let's talk about that VTEC solenoid. Oh baby, so good. You can see there's still texture from like the rust or whatever, but rust converter and then chassis blacked it. Man, that is such an improvement. Just right there, that one little thing, such an improvement. Okay, so moving right along, you can see the valve cover is back off. That's cause my dude, Lowball Zach is gonna paint this for me. Give it a nice little wrinkle and look oh and fresh. I'm just gonna clean it up quick and not send it to him so dang rough. Well, that didn't go as smooth as I wanted to, but I think Zach's got some strippers, so he'll be able to get the rest of it off. Some of it flaked off real good, and I, I cleaned off what I could. The main thing I did was really clean out the underside here so there's no oil residue and dripping oil and stuff in there, so it'll ship nice. Valve cover is ready to go. Zach Yoroshku. So as you can see, we got the intake pipe off, and that is because I'm gonna change the thermostat while the radiator is drained, I figured might as well, and there is also another engine mount. I'm looking right at it, but it's not in focus. There it goes. Yep, another engine mount right there on top of the transmission. So having the intake out, I can get to that. For now, thermostat, engine mount. Oh, there we go. So here is our new OEM thermostat. And this was only like $18 at the current exchange rate. It was like 2,000 yen. So cannot beat that um, I'm always surprised at how cheap some of these Honda parts are if you guys need Honda parts let me know at least B18C stuff for like a GSR because I have a title I can go in there and actually get parts so now I just gotta plop that back in there it's a purely gasketed system there's no RTV necessary which is awesome and Nissan guys are gonna kick out of this it's only two bolts that hold it on how cool is that no RTV required, like such an elegant solution, a really high quality fitted gasket that goes completely over the things. And while we're here, this is the old one. You can see, I thought it looked weird coming out of there. This old, just a matter of time before it's gonna fail. This inner diaphragm seal or whatever, it is just chunking out. Look at, there you go, look at that. Like, yuck, it's all breaking down, just sludge. So I'm really happy I'm switching this now. Honda's ingenuity just gets better and better. Those little rubber tabs on the backside there, you can see in the housing here, there's two cutouts for it. When I put it in there, there's only one position where it's gonna fit and the bleeder is gonna go in the right position. Love it. And just like that, the thermostat pops right in there, fits in place, sits right where it should and doesn't fall out. I've never had such an enjoyable thermostat changing experience. Thermostat installed and all buttoned up. The rest of the air box is out. Jack is underneath the trans. I'm gonna get this motor mount out. Here's a bit of a curious one, maybe one of you guys know. So this is the SIRG mount, the old one. It has this steel bracket, looks like nothing U-shaped up on top. So here's the Type R one. It looks like it has, you know, the provisions for it, but it looks like it never had it mounted. So is that like a vibration thing? And Type R is, you know, more race car, less weight, so they just ditched it. I don't know, I'm gonna maybe just leave it off. Old fatigued and cracked out. Freshy. New motor mount is in, no dramas, just, you know, OEM parts drop in exactly how they should, so that is awesome. And it fits in there one way, like this width here fits between these, and then you just hit the angle just right, and the base will clear these studs and it'll fall right into place. I'm gonna probably leave the intake off for now because I still need to negotiate how to go about doing that rear mount. But for today, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Hey, what up? Happy Monday, getting into today. I gotta run a bunch of errands and it's finally time. I decided I'm gonna make a little trip while I'm out and about. The, oh, I can't get it open. The GT wing, finally time for it to go bye-bye. So I'm gonna stop at Up Garage and just dump it off. Whatever they give me, I'll be surprised. Put your guesses down below. What do you think, an old aluminum dual element? 1425 centimeter or no millimeter wide GT wing is worth. But anyway, it's just a big 
it's just super in the way. I move it every time I need something. It just has to go. So while out and about, yeah, this thing's going bye bye. Ah, uh, this is worth a look. In the back of the Integra, that thing looks so big, but back here it looks really tiny. But yeah, anyway, other stops. We gotta ship that down to my dude, Zach. That's the valve cover. And then we got a little another package going off to America. To Justin, thank you so much. Nerd Gold JP. All right, so I got a waiting number. Sell this wing. In the meantime, I guess we can look at some parts. Oh, Ricaro Confetti for 400. This is all, I mean, Exchange rate's way better right now. Unknown bucket, Nani Waya, 200. BNR 32, HCR 32 tails for one, or 17, 18,000 yen. Without the paintable housing to it. This location has two S chassis front cross members. 13,000 yen, like 100 bucks each. Doesn't seem like a bad thing just to put in your collection. Cause you never know. DC two parts, but it's for a type R. A big top fuel, zero one thousand intake pipe. Oh, these are sick. Here's the Urus Overfender flares. This is like the reverse concave style. Sixteen thousand yen, one hundred forty-ish bucks. But I always thought those were really cool. Not a common sight. Here's three S15 six-speed transmissions, eighty thousand yen each. That's probably not a bad price these days, considering but it's pretty outstanding that they have three at this one location. Posted these on Instagram because I was at the store the other day stopping by, but holy cow. Crazy. I'll just say easy three grand, like 2,700. 16 by 735. If you guess 300 yen, you're a winner. <laughs> one old aluminum G2 wing, 300 yen. So yeah, 300 yen, there you go. I'm not even upset about it. I'm just happy to have the space. I didn't, didn't even know it was with the car. It was just in there when I got it. So I'm 300 yen ahead of whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever it would have been. So yeah, happy to be rid of that thing. And now I'm on my way to Honda to check on some parts. So just a busy run around Monday. I had a little family beach day yesterday. Beach day today with the fam and 10,000 of our closest friends. But that over there is Enoshima, really famous kind of land spark, landmark in this area of Kanagawa. And then Fujisan, Mount Fuji's right over there as well. So the weather here is finally switching over to really kind of summerish weather. Let's see if we can get some good news at Honda and find some parts. All right, back out here. Got the parts ordered from Honda yesterday. Oil pan gasket and the AC tensioner pulley is on the way. Um, so we'll get those in when they get here. First things first, actually first things first, I was just getting set up, check this out. Just par for the course really. So I was just moving stuff back here. Now that the wing is gone, looking awesome with all the space. But I picked this up. I didn't pick it up by here. I picked this thing up just cause I wanted to move it. And then like, all it did was show me that there's a huge freaking hole crack in the intake pipe. That sucks. Again, just gotta figure out what the options are for that, but no wing is awesome. So for today, I'm just gonna bite the bullet and try and get that rear engine mount out and then we'll be all caught up on engine mounts. So I was just crawling around underneath the car, checking all the stuff out for the first time and here's kind of what I found. This huge whatever L-shaped bracket has the engine mount tucked into it up here and it mounts into the block or the trans in a few places along this side. For clearance reasons, the access to these bolts, I could do it with the header on, but if I'm gonna do the oil pan anyway, I might just take off this, this front pipe or elbow pipe, whatever, whatever the terminology is, um, and just pray that those bolts or the nuts come off well. And then on the back side here, these look like they might live so i kind of have confidence that this piece maybe will come out and i can reuse the components and then since we're under here and we have access to it this is the shifter rod and you can see how much play there is 
between the shifter and it and that is just sliding back and forth i don't know if that's supposed to be like that i surely would think not repair those replace the bushings i have no idea what's going on so yeah if i take the exhaust off then i have easy access to the shift linkages easy access to the oil pan easy access to the rear mount even though i don't want to do it i gotta re fix or replace the exhaust anyway so it's gotta come out or something needs to be done at some point so might as well just do it front pipe is out no real dramas there just remember to undo your oxygen sensor first which i did experience has taught me that you don't want something hung up by a wire when you're stuck there trying to remove it and there's no gasket here whatever these little crush th seals are maybe like that is the gasket so i'm not going to mess with that i didn't lose any hardware it all survived it just pulled the stud out of the header but everything else is okay so we're in good shape with the front pipe out is night and day difference i can get right to these bolts there's one up on top here on both sides or one's a nut and then the mount is over there so that was definitely the right move for how easy that was so i got those two big shiny guys at the bottom loose there but then at the top it looks like there's one more but i think that's actually a captive nut because there is a bolt head on the other side of the transmission it's like a pass-through bolt so i'm gonna go up and over there and try and get that off but these guys are loose just with the old fake breaker or fake impact method so this top one on the trans is loose it's buried right below the thermostat just trust me it's there <laughs> and then from up here from up here that is the motor mount bolt there that passes straight through the motor mount all right so as you can see i got all the bolts of the t-bracket off and it won't come out there as is just due to its shape and size but what it does allow is more clearance around the mount so i can get better access to the bolts that secure the mount to the cross member send help your boy is struggling here these two coolant hoses are the heater hoses that go into the cabin and they're directly above where the bolts are on the mount. So I don't have any access down on them and then there's so much stuff around it I can't swing a wrench even when I get it on there to get enough, you know, movement to break free. And, and in addition to that, here's the new mount just for example's sake. These holes on the mount are so close to this wall that you can't really get a good angle on a ratchet in there without you know hitting it and then the firewall is built out over it halfway like that so you can't get cleanly above it it is just a terrible design that there's no access to and i don't know if i need to go get some longer extensions and just run extensions all the way out the hood basically uh with like a combination of swivels or wobbles or something <laughs> So they're just driving around collecting trash like disabled motorcycles or aluminum wheels or washers and dryers and microwaves and stuff that's hard to throw away. A uh, little K-truck blasting out the message of, hey, we're going to pick it up. Anyway, I got one of them and here's the setup. You can see the blue cable is the adjustment for the heater. I opened that flap just to release it and then when the nut was off the bracket from the firewall, with that released it allowed me to slide it out a little bit so with it slid out you can see my extension right behind it there and that is wedged in let's see if we get another angle that is slid between the two hard lines that are run through there and kind of fitting down that space so it's got extension and there's one universal joint right off of a short 14 mil socket down there extension 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 to the breaker setup and this here when i bought it i was like i don't know when i'm ever going to need that but sure why not you can see this is a 3 8 extension but it's got this hex head on it as well so i was able to use a 16 mil socket and then step it up to a half inch extension because this is the only other extension i had so i could make it work to get that one so one down two more to go i'm going to try something like this over there all right so setup number two for the other side using the same extension setup, riding on the throttle body there, and then flossing the two heater hoses that are down there with the extension and a short socket down on top of the bolt. Just got, just got that one. One more. All right, got number three. Here's the setup for it. Again, coming in next to the throttle body here and just going straight down through the top of that T bracket. There's like a little U-shape opening and you can kind of weasel in through there. Again, short socket 14 on the bolt, universal 
extensions all the way up. Just make sure your socket's seated down on the bolt so you're not stripping it out at a weird angle because it is not a straight shot. It's kind of a weird angle. So just make sure you're seated on the bolt so you're not stripping stuff out. But holy moly, I just gotta get those loose all the way, but that is crazy. Man, what started out is going pretty smooth. That was a struggle to figure out how to route all that. Way easier than I envisioned. Just gotta move some hoses and stuff out of the way and just kind of ram the extensions through there. For both of the side ones, I put the socket and the universal joint on the, the bolt first and then I slid the extension down and locked it into the uh, universal. The last one, I was able to just go straight through the top, jiggle, 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 and got the seat down on it. So just take your time. Hopefully that helps somebody else out. Definitely not a how-to, but for what was a huge headache, it was a little easier than what I was making it out to be. Sweet, sweet victory, and this makes it even better. Here's the new mount, nice and one piece. Here is the old mount, completely broken on the back side. So at least that was not all for naught. We're going to get a nice, firm, crisp engine. So that's awesome, and I'll show you can't really get the big T bracket out but I was able to maneuver it you know finagle it whatever over and turn it sideways and the mount that was sitting here was able to come out and slide out so then I can put the new one in load it in there and then as one piece kind of work it back into position and slot it in there because this is it's a pretty big dude but yep yeah. hopefully that helps some of you guys out there if you're doing the same thing or thinking about doing the same thing it's kind of a bear of a job but I think it'll be totally worth it I'm beat, so I'm gonna wrap it there. Hopefully no drama's going back in. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Much love, be well.